Good afternoon. The purpose of the press conference today is to discuss the latest developments surrounding the Zier Bugs 2015 murder investigation. I'm joined today by Ms. Zier's mother, Luana Bugs, and her sister and family. And uh, I certainly know um, how important they have been to you over these last several years, providing some incredible support during the days that followed Ms. Zier's tragic death. Uh, I'm also joined by members of an investigative, uh, an investigative team that uh, worked tirelessly on this, and I'm going to talk about that team uh, a little a little bit later. But um, Investigator Hilton was the lead in the homicide. Um, you've got the Midlands Gang Task Force represented um, up here. Of course, that's comprised of uh, multiple agencies. Um, uh, Richland County Sheriff's Department and the uh, Columbia Police Department lead that effort. Um, Captain Goggins is in the back. Uh, I don't know why, but I appreciate you being here, Vince, and the work that the task force did on this. Um, our ATF partners in this investigation um, were just absolutely incredible, and uh, up here today with me is uh, acting ASAC Chad Nesbitt with ATF. and. Don Berlin, who um, also chose to stay in the back, is, was instrumental. Um, he works very closely with our gang investigators. Um, of course, we had uh, tremendous help from um, State Law Enforcement Division Lab. Um, they were instrumental in connecting some dots on, on this case, and as well as the analysts with the Richland County Sheriff's Department and Detective Sergeant Marlowe McCann with the Lexington County Sheriff's Department. So it's days like this that absolutely remind me of why we do this job. I can't explain to you all what it meant to me to talk to Miss Bugs um, last week right before the holidays to tell her of our intent to charge someone who was responsible for the death of her son. Um, it was a powerful and emotional moment. And it's the moment that I can tell you with certainty that it's moments we never forget. Um, I was able to reach out to Ms. Bugs with Investigator Hilton, Captain Thornton. Um, those are very, um, very powerful moments for us. Today we'll be charging Leonard Mickens, um, African American <coughs> male, date of birth 5 1990 with the murder of Nazir Bugs, uh, with possession of a weapon during a violent crime and the attempted murder of Rakeem Lloyd. As many of you remember, a day that I, I know Miss Bugs will never forget, on July 3rd, 2015, this year of Bugs, who was 14 years old at the time of this incident, and his cousin Raheem Lloyd were walking home from a shooting from shooting basketball at Lorick Park Gym. At about 9:15 at night, while walking in the 4100 block of Grand Street, a light-colored vehicle approached and ultimately stopped beside them. The driver's window came down and shots were fired. Najir and Rahim tried to run away. Rahim fell to the ground and Najir continued to run. The vehicle sped away and Rahim was found a short distance away between houses, excuse me, Najir was found by regime a short distance away between some houses. He had collapsed after being shot one time in the upper body and was subsequently pronounced deceased at the scene. The investigation led to locating several witnesses who provided details such as vehicle description, number of shots fired, suspect vehicle um, direction of travel. Investigators also found video footage of the incident that, that was captured on a home security camera that um, depicted the vehicle stopping um, beside Najir and, and showed Najir and Rahim running away. Crime scene investigators also found and collected spent shell casings at the scene. The spent casings were submitted to the SLED lab for DNA analysis and NIBIN entry. And if you'll indulge me for a moment, it's the results of the evidence collection, the forensic examination, the ballistics testing, the DNA analysis, and the incredible multi-jurisdictional agency collaboration I want to discuss further. This will also illustrate what an absolute menace Leonard Mickens had been to our community, and he was literally what I would consider to be a walking crime spree, but not anymore. Starting with Najir's case, sled DNA analysis confirmed that Leonard Mickens' DNA was present on a 40 caliber spent shell casing found at the Najir Bugs murder scene. 
ballistic testing and knife and entry of the 40 caliber spent casing also determined uh, that the same gun was used during the Najir Bugs murder. It was also used during a July, or excuse me, June 2015 attempted murder, which occurred at 7613 Garners Ferry Road in Richland County's jurisdiction. At that scene, deputies collected 40 caliber casings and examined them and submitted them for an IVAN entry, ultimately linking back to the Bugs case. On August 11, 2015, Lexington County Sheriff's Department investigated the murder of Dante Foyle at 5324 Bush River Road. Last week, on November 20th, Lexington County charged Leonard Mickens with Doyle's murder. During the Doyle murder crime scene investigation, investigators collected spent 9mm casings at that scene. Further ballistic examination and knife and entry determined that the same weapon used in Doyle's murder was used in the August 6, 2015 Gonzales Garden shooting where four people were shot, all non-fatal injuries. In the Gonzales Garden shooting investigation, investigators collected 9mm spent casings, submitted them for ballistics examination and knife and entry, and it resulted in a link back to Doyle's murder. And last, on August 27, 2015, the Midlands Gang Task Force investigators, they located Mickens along with several other people sitting in a vehicle behind a residence on Victory Street in Columbia. A subsequent search of the vehicle by gang investigators located three firearms, a 45 caliber pistol, a 40 caliber pistol, a nine millimeter pistol. The weapons were test fired, examined, and spit casings entered into Niven. The Niven results indicated the 40 caliber pistol and 9 millimeter pistol were used during another attempted murder that occurred about 12 hours earlier at 3908 West Avenue in Columbia. The victim in the West Avenue shooting was hit multiple times and suffered non-fatal injuries. Leonard Mickens was taken into federal custody for an unrelated weapons charge following the August 27th Victory Street incident. He has been detained in the Lexington County Detention Center since that time um, and while this investigation continued by all the agencies I previously mentioned. So in recap, we had a total of six instances where there was connectivity between Leonard Mickens and firearms in some way, shape, or form. Um, we've recovered three weapons, uh, two of them identified to multiple cases. And then on the Grand Street case and the, and the Lexington County case, we know that we have connections um, involving a gun, but those guns have not been recovered. This is a textbook example of what you can achieve with multi-agency cooperation and collaboration when it doesn't matter who gets the credit. Um, I can't say enough about the um, Nibin system that we have um, taken advantage of the last few years and that system would not be possible if it wasn't for our ATF partners. Um, that really is, um, I think, advancing us quicker than any technology I've seen in, in the last 10 years in terms of um, violent crime investigations. I can't say enough about the work of the Criminal Investigation Division, uh, specifically our violent crime investigators. And just to, to recap, in 2017, we had 11 homicides. Um, every one of those homicides was cleared by arrest. And in 2018, year to date, we've had 14 homicides and they've also cleared those by arrest. Just a few weeks ago, we announced the arrest of Carlos Lowe for the murder of Anne Marie Johnson. That was a 2015 Paul Street homicide that again, with, um, um, it's another example of, um, we don't call cases cold around here. Um, we continue to follow leads up um, and we brought closure to that family. And then of course, earlier this year, we announced the Brook Pines double murder case arrest and that is pending trial um, um, either next month or the first of the year. So I say thank you again to our partnering agencies, the work of the Midlands Gang Task Force and the cooperation with um, the State Law Enforcement Division in Lexington County uh, the Fifth Circuit Solicitor's Office was um, outstanding to work with in this investigation, and the U.S. Attorney's Office has been instrumental, I think, in pushing this um, forward.